The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is... Thank you very much for your patience in a very lengthy uh, scripture readings as often. So this is who we are. We keep on reading the Bible as much as we can. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible word of the Lord. So again, we would like to thank uh, everyone who are joining us in Zoom as well as in Facebook Live. To mention, we have Ati Hazel as well as, yeah, we have many uh, Buyanti. Thank you for joining us as well as for every one of us. So as we continue, this church is keep on preaching the word of the Lord by book. And we praise the Lord because last year we uh, just completed preaching the book of Romans. And it, every three months we, are, we have like a break. And that's the time we preach in a, a topical manner. So, I would like you to open your Bible. In chapter 1, we are still in chapter 1 of Juna. We are now studying in verse 7 up to verse 17. So, I would like to read to you again this passage. And then we will pray. Juna chapter 1, verse 7 up to 17. I'm reading in ESB version, it says, And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and, and, and the lot fell on Juna. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And where do you came from? What is your country and of what people are you and he said to them i am a hebrew and i fear the lord the god of heaven who made the sea and the dry land then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him what is this that you have done for the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the lord because he had told them then he said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grow more and more tempest, uh, tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not, for the sea grow and grew more and more tempestuous and against them. Therefore, they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Juna and hurled him into the sea. And the sea says for its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. Verse 17, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Juna, and Juna was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Praise God for the reading of his word. Let us come to the Lord again in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time as we continue to study your words. You are the one who calls us that we have this kind of appetite. Salamat po ng marami sa kabila ng mga pangyayari sa mundong ito. You sustain us through your, your words, through the gospel of yours. Give us the understanding to understand who you are. And what is your plan? You are the sovereign God. And all and, and in all we pray in your begotten Son, Jesus. Amen. 
Okay. So just uh, keep on holding your Bible as we go through. As a part of my introduction, we praise God of our study on this beautiful book of Jonah. As I remember, our dear brother, Brother Dong or Elder Dong, also known as Pastor Dong, Elder is Pastor, he emphasized he knows Jonah's story. Jonah is swallowed by big fish. And every one of us, maybe we know about him as a man swallowed by big fish. Jonah's life, or the book of Jonah, is not just a story of his life. Please take note. Jonah's life, or the book of Jonah, is not just a story of his life, but a history. History that proclaimed God's grace, mercy, and steadfast love to the Gentiles like, like you and me. In other words, Jonah's story becomes a history. It is a testimony of who God is. Yes, Jonah is a prophet, a Hebrew. He is not like us. I am not a prophet, and you are not a prophet, and you are not a Hebrew or an Israelite. But Jonah... He has a similarity with us, with me, and most probably with you. Jonah is a rebellious person. <laughs> and I hope uh, I am like him only. But we are so rebellious like him. Even we know God, we keep on rebelling God. We know that we are Christians, we keep on acting as if we are not. But here in this the, this beautiful book, we can see that God is sovereign in all he plans. And in all he plans, he will accomplish them for sure. Everyone, anything are subject to him. As I meditate, I, I, as I read this beautiful Story, storybook. Jonah's life or this book even re repeatedly quoted by Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 verse 30 to 41 and in Luke chapter 11 verse 29 to 32 which we will read later on. So napakaganda po ng aklat na ito na hindi po ito istorya ng buhay lamang ni Hunas. Bagkos ito po ay istorya na kung sino ang Diyos at ang kanyang grasya, pag-ibig, at habag. There are two points we need to look at in these verses. In verse 7 up to verse 16, point number 1, God is sovereign to every man. But please note that I changed our title for today. When I seen it through WhatsApp or through our WhatsApp group, I put uh, the title was Juna is thrown into the sea. So it seems maybe we will be focusing on Jonas being rebellious. But I change it, God is sovereign in all. And I think this is most appropriate as the Bible says so. So point number one is, God is sovereign to every man. God is sovereign to every man. When we say, when I see man, it does not refer only to the men like me, or men, or daddies, and Papa and Tatay. But it means man as a human in, in reference to all humanity. We study that in our uh, systematic theology. Man represents to humanity. 
So God is sovereign to every man. That means Juna, mariners, everyone, even for you and for the president, whoever they are, and the kings. As we read the book of Juna in the verse 7, they are out of panic. Litong-lito sila. Ano na ba ang aming gagawin? There is a tremendous tempus raging. It's like maybe a signal number four typhoon in Philippines. So out of the panic, out of desperation of miners, the captain found one man just sleeping in the inner part of the ship. Ano klase ng tao ito? Krabi naman. They are like uh, almost maybe drawn, but there is one guy, he just sleeping. And that is Juna. The captain instructing Juna to call his God, hoping that it will help. So they will not perish, as our their brother last time preached, that everyone called their God. Thinking that their God will help them. But here we go in verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 7, of course, as we study. What happened? So in verse 5, verse 6. In verse 6, so the captain came and said to him, What do you mean? You sleeper, arise, call out your God. Perhaps the God will give you a total to us that we may not perish. Ano na ang ating gagawin? So maybe he is a very good captain, but he is desperate. Verse 7, and they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account is evil has come upon us. So, that, so they cast lots, and the lot fell on Juna. Verse 7, they cast Lots. The casting of lots was a, was a common form of divination in the ancient world. Divination is a practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. So ito yung kanilang mga gawain at sa hanggang ngayon, ito'y pinapractice pa ng marami. But for us Christians, we are not practicing this anymore. And even... God does not forbid this to do for the ancient Israel. Ancient Israel, this method of knowing God's will by casting lots, God is not forbidding them because God ruled over the lots. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 26, verse 40, 55, when they are dividing the land, they make the lots. In Joshua chapter 18, verse 6, when they are also dividing their lots, they cast lots. And when, when Judas died, they made the lots. In Acts chapter 1, verse 24 to 26, in selection, the replacement of who will, who will be the replacement of Judas, and then it found out that Mat Matthias was selected. So, it is not forbidden casting lots. We can see that God is sovereign that even in casting lots, he ruled over to point out that the problem is Jonas. Jonas, the rebellious prophet, God sent him to Nineveh, but he wants to go to Tarshish. But we need to make it clear that in our time, this casting lots is not allowed for us Christians. We are not encouraged to do this. 
Kaya kung mayroong mga major decision, wag na wag po kayong maglagay ng cut, uh, ng lots or dice. Lord, this is your will? Yes or no? No. We believers, biblical believers, we are clear that the Bible is a complete principle guidance to us in every principle of life. This is the so-called complete revealed written word of God. Kaya wala na po tayong magic-magic or wala na tayong pakikiusap doon sa mga namatay na or even making or casting a lot. So that is a very good note for us. Then, when the captain cast lots and fall to Juna, this is how God pointed out, Ho! Si Juna talaga ang dahilan why this happens to you. God pointed to rebel rebellious Juna and started this captain started asking to Juna in verse 8. We can read. In verse 8, they have concluded that the problem is on the account of Juna. The captain asked Juna. Then they said to him, or the mariners, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And where you came from? What is your country? And what and of what people are you? And in verse 9, this is the answer of Juna. And think about how he how he answered. Because for him, maybe he's just answering these questions. But above that, the sovereign God is accomplishing what his plan. So Jonah, verse 9, he said, and he said to them, Jonah said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Let us think about how Mr. Jonah replied. Let us digest his reply. Number one, he said, I am a Hebrew. Juna identify his ethnic terms. Normally, the Israelites, when they are asked by a foreigners, they will always say, I am a Hebrew. Like Joseph, when he was asked in the book of Genesis, we can read that in Genesis chapter 40, verse 15, he identifies his ethnicity term as Hebrew. And even Paul says, I am the Hebrew of Hebrew, Hebrews from the lineage of Benjamin. This is normally the Israelites identify themselves to the foreigners. The next is, he said, I fear the Lord. In your Bibles, you can see that the Lord is capital L-O-R-D. Okay, that's the translation of I fear Yahweh. Yahweh is the personal name of God. We can read that in Exodus chapter 3 verse 15. Now, Jonah again identify himself in religious terms. His Lord, capital L is more letter O-R-D, His Lord, ang kanyang Panginoon, is the God of heaven, declares. He said, the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Maybe Jonah is just telling who he is and whom he believed, but actually is declaring the God of heaven. There is no other God who can calm down this kind of raging of waves. These storms, they are passing through. God, uh, Jonah is declaring the God, uh, the creator God. God of heaven. 
And actually, God of heaven is widely used as an old title of God. Even in the Persian Empire, when the Israelites was exiled, the Persian, the Iranians, our neighbor country, they knows about God of heaven. That the God of Judah is the creator God. He is the sovereign of anyone and everyone or anything. We can see that in 2 Corinthians Chronicles chapter 36, verse 23, Ezra chapter 1, verse 2, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, and Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4, God of heaven, one of the old title of God, because God who created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 declares. During the seed conversation, God is doing the conversion. So let me let me repress your mind or our mind. During the seed conversation between Juna and the mariners, actually God is doing the conversion. We need to understand, Christians, that we need just to declare who is God and the gospel of God. God is doing his business. God is doing his plan. I just keep on preaching today. But it is God who really give you understanding. God who give us really the conviction to know who he is. As I remember Peter, when he did the evangelism and he said, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ whom you have crucified. And later on, we can see Paul during his evangelization in Acts chapter 17, verse 22 to 34. He saw some people worship, worshiping for the unknown God. Paul started seeing them. There is one God who made heaven and earth. And praise the Lord that God whom we believe. The God in the Bible, he is the God who, come, who comes down to rescue sinners like you and me. So God convict Judah to say who he is. Kinonvict ng Diyos si Junas, Junas. Ito ka talaga, naniniwala ka sa akin, just declare who am I. And then, the captain and his Mariners, they are afraid exceedingly. They understand God of heaven. God of heaven that he can only calm down this storm. That's why our scripture reading was selected during when Jesus with his disciples. Their disciples are a little bit panicked. Or maybe very funny, even though they are fishers of men or fishers, they know how to swim, but they are in panic because there is a big storm. But Jesus just calm it. Because Jesus is the second person of the triune God. He is God. Now we need to understand that God of heaven. Is God who punishes the sinner and the only one can deliver them from this stormy sailing or dito sa kanilang sa pangyayari nila. So God is sovereign in all. Even in pointing who is the, on, on whom account is this and now he is convicting these sailors by Juna is just declaring who he is. And we can read in verse 10, it says like this, Then men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told him, verse 11, 
and they said to him, what shall we do? Uh, what shall we do to you? That the sea may quiet down for us. For the sea grow more and more temptuous. This is Mr. Jonah reply in verse 12. So they are in panic. They know that God can help them. And being a prophet, he said, Jonah, or what we should do, we should do in order that this will stop. Well, Jonah is so honest in his answer. And he knows what is to be done. Verse 11. Uh, verse 12, he said, he said to them, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. When the sea will quiet, then, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Jonah, he knows very well the solution of the problem and the only can solve the problem is God. To solve the problem, Jonah confessed that yes, because of me. And you should throw me out from the ship into the sea. But we can see here, sometimes maybe in verse 13, these mariners trying hard, maybe they, they have a little bit, uh, don't believe about Juna. So we will be a criminal to throw this man in the sea. So in verse 13, they try hard. Verse 13, it says, Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more, tempted against them. Ang Panginoon, ang Diyos ay mayroon ng solusyon sa kanilang problema. Ang kanilang problema ay kung paano humupa itong malakas na alon. Kailangan itapon si Kunas. Mukhang di pa sila naniwala. It seems they don't believe so they try hard. They try hard. But it never stops. Sometimes we are we believe God halfway, but not fully believe. These mariners, they try hard, but it never stop. It become more and more tempestuous against them. And in verse 14, we can read, Therefore, they call out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life. Linat on us innocent blood. For you, Lord, have done as it pleased you. We can see that these people, the mariners, they have understand that God can do whatever it pleases to him. There is a question that why God also punished these mariners because the mariners are also sinners but God in his grace God is converting them convicting them that you are also sinner to be punished with Jonas and they repented and saying forgive us innocent because you are the God who can do what pleases to you These mariners, this captain, they are also sinners like you and me. All have sinned and come full short from the glory of God. And God is sovereign to give them punishment, but God is spared them. And that's why in verse, uh, in verse 15, we can read, So they pick up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. So when they exerted, putting their faith in God, believing that Jonah is the problem, that God will stop this uh, raging or this storm, when they acted on their faith in God and thrown Jonah, oh, everything will 
Askal mas what do you think? What is the application for us to that? A lot of people, actually during this pandemic, I hope that every one of us realize that we are exposed for this contagious, what we call this virus. And because of this virus, we are exposed. Someone is going to do to get vaccine. The government is trying hard to get vaccines. And it seems the vaccine is just doing idle. Some people say, well, I have a first dose of vaccine, praise the Lord. Second dose will be in February 3. So people are trying hard. But one thing we can hope is when we trust in the Lord, in his promise, when we believe in his words like this mariners, we believe that they need to throw the evil, the cause of evil Jonah. In our life today, actually our problem is not about the pandemic. The pandemic exposes us that we need God. I have a lot of people we keep on discussing about the real problem of this time. And I said, the problem is not your husband. The problem is not your, your children. The problem is not your, your uh, work. The problem is us. This pandemic expo exposes us. That we need God ultimately more than ever. And the only hope is in him. And that is, that's why he gave his begotten son Jesus. That he is our blessed hope. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. And we will continue reading. This is what happened to these mariners. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made the vows. This is actually happened to a genuine believer in Christ. When they understood that they are desperately looking for God because they are sinners like the mariners, they give a vow, they offer sacrifices to God. When we believe in Christ, this is what happened to Every Christian. Let me read to you in Hebrews chapter uh, 13, verse 15. So one of my always favorite verse to go to go or to look at it. Ito po yung sinasabi sa Hebrews chapter 13, verse similar po natin sa 15. Sabi rito, through him, that is through Christ. Then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledges his name. The Hebrew is saying, when you are a Christian, when you put your trust in Christ, when you know that you're a sinner, and now you commit yourself to Christ, there is a new offering of singing as well as offering of praise. That's why we keep on rejoicing God of who he is, not of our circumstances. We rejoice in the Lord always. And verse 16, it says, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, Do not neglect to do good and to share, with, with, uh, to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So, the same here with his mariners. Exceedingly, the Lord, the men feared the Lord exceedingly and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. God is sovereign in all. He is sovereign to Juna. Juna is not doing well. Yeah, Christians like you and me. <laughs> Sometimes, or most of the times, we are not doing well. We are like Juna. 
but god because he is sovereign to his people he will make us tremendous chastisement if you are still disobeying him and if you are a children of him there will be a reckoning there is no judgment for a genuine christian but there is a tremendous discipline god is sovereign for every humanity and even these mariners god saved them from their sins and god is sovereign over the nature when jonah was thrown in the sea it was exceedingly calm when we talk about god is sovereign we can trust him when we think about god is sovereign god is not answerable to anyone of you and anyone of us he is not obligated to follow anyone or everyone he is all alone but god he is a sovereign in love mercy as well as in grace point number 2 God sovereign over the nature and that is in verse 17. So we are just a couple of minutes and we will be completed. God sovereign over nature. We can see from the wind, from the storm, the sea, the fish is appointed by God to cut Jonah, we can read that. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Verse 17 started with the word, the Lord appointed. We can read that in chapter 4, verse 6 and 8. Jonah chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, I will read it to you, to us. It says, Now the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be shed over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. Verse 8, uh, verse 7, But when down come up, the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. Verse 8, when the sun rose, God appointed a sourcing east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. What happened? How we understand that God appointed? This is to remind us that God is sovereign. His sovereignty is even over the nature. People does not believe that God can grow up a plant immediately. Yes, he can do because he is sovereign. He is a more powerful God. We can see that. We can clearly understood the God of the Bible, we can really trust. And that's the only hope we can, is to put our trust in Christ, the begotten Son of God. The great face was appointed, was bring by God in order to, in order to, Preserve Jonah. It is an instrument uh, by God to pursue his plan to the Ninibites. Jonah was three days and three nights. By the way, okay, I hope maybe you don't ask me a question why or what kind of fish Jonah swall uh, swallowed. Uh, so, Juna, ano kaya ang isda ang lumunok kay Hunas? At marami itong mga komentaryo. Maaring whales, sperm whales, 
or great uh, shark? Actually, we don't know really. But we know that God is sovereign who can use a big fish in order to preserve his people for his purpose. Actually, there is a big debate in a school. There is a young boy, I think, small boy. He knows the story of Jonah and his family. His father and mother keep on seeing him, how great God he is, and God uh, allowed this big fish to swallow up Jonah. And this little boy, he believes that this is a big whale. Well, there is a variety of whales. Then this guy, is a, and the boy said, no, teacher, that's the whale. The teacher is a biology and a little bit very good in study of the wells. And he said, no, it is not the wells, what you're thinking, because the esophagus and the tummy of the well is a small one. So Juna could not fit in in the esophagus itself. So they have the debate. And the little boy said, Ma, yes, maybe I'm wrong in the wells, but I'm sure that God is sovereign to protect his people. And by the way, you are true, you are correct when we will see in heaven. But when I will not see you in heaven, then you are wrong. So better repent, mom, and believe in the Lord. So I like the story of the little boy. Yes, we are not sure what kind of fish, but we are sure that God can preserve his people. That's why I like Jesus saying, no one can snatch them out in my hand. And even, Peter, even Paul says, no one can separate us from the love of God. God can protect us, can sustain us in whatever means. He is sovereign ever. Uh, he is sovereign ever over nature. Three days and three nights, Juna was in the belly of the fish. Jesus is using this example to communicate his message of truth. Not only for the sign and significance of three days, as he will arise in three days. But Jesus is using Jonah's preaching, the efficacy of Jonah's preaching, that Ninevites should recognize there is God, a God of divine authority, and they should respond in repentance of their sins. Jesus is using, is quoting Jonah, as we can read in Matthew, warning people to repent, repent of their sins. Let me read to you Jonah chapter 12, verses, we'll start in, 30 to 41. So this is where Jesus quoting Judah. I'll read it in verse uh, 38. It says, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation six. Seek for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah has three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The man of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, Something greater than Jonah is here. So Jesus is echoing his quotation to Jonah 
that everyone should repent. And Jesus is saying, there is more higher than Jonah, and he is the only Savior. In our conclusion, Jesus actually is calling our attention, and even Jonah is calling the attention that everyone will repent. Repent of their sins and put their trust in Christ, the only Savior of every sinner. And then when we are in Christ, we continually live for Christ. The question is, as we conclude, are you like the mariners, the captain? That when they understand that God is, a, God is with the divine authority, he requires us repentance of our sins and put our trust in Christ. Do we believe Christ? So what was happened? We can see that God will always accomplish his plans. His plans and purpose. In this case, the salvation of the mariners, the captain, is the foreshadow of God's plan to save Ninevites. He display his sovereign grace, mercy, and love to the Gentiles. God can use everyone, anyone, for his purpose, not only for Jonah and mariners. Yes, sometimes, most of the time, we are like Jonah, disobedient, rebellious. But be like him. Tell who is God. God of heaven who loves sinners but punish unrepentant sinners. The mariners understood that there is God of love and there is God of wrath. We need God. God come down for us in Christ. And that's why we can hope only in Christ, the sovereign Savior of a sinner like you and me. And I hope we can think about what's happening on our life. Our hope is anchored in the vaccine. Our hope is one day this pandemic will be finished and we will go marry. Our hope should be in the sovereign God. And that sovereign God, he has sovereign love, mercy to those who repent and believe in his begotten son, Jesus. Are you like the mariners who repented and most probably speak about God and live for God? During this pandemic, are we living for God? Are we living for Christ? Let us all come to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you, Lord. What's a, what a joy that we are encouraged. What a joy that you speak to us who you are. Despite of this tremendous problem of what we have, similar to these mariners during the time of Jonah. Lord, most probably some of us, we are like Jonah, rebellious, disobedient to you. But because of your great mercy, those who repented and accepted your begotten son, Jesus, sometimes you are chastening us. And I pray also, Lord, that maybe some of us who are hearing this preaching, 
They are desperately like the mariners. They are looking for solution of their problems. And only the solution is Christ. While we are sinners, you demonstrate your love to us. You have given Jesus as our ransom. Lord, you are sovereign and I pray that through this preaching, you will convict believers to be more faithful on you. You will convict unbelievers to come to you in faith, and that is in Christ, who died at the cross of Calvary and three days rose again. You demand us repentance, forgive us our sins, and direct us to your begotten Son Jesus, and let it be that the Holy Spirit. Convict us this truth. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.